Hello, this is Dr. Schleith, and in this video, I'll be uh, deriving the expression that for a perfectly elastic collision, the relative speed of approach equals the relative speed of separation. So where does that idea come from? It comes from the law of conservation of momentum, which says that the initial momentum is equal to the final momentum. And we'll consider sort of the case of two objects colliding. When two objects collide and the kinetic energy is also conserved, um, momentum is always conserved in collisions, but if the kinetic energy is also conserved, then we call that collision perfectly elastic. And so let's kind of explore this a little bit further. Remember that momentum is mass times velocity and kinetic energy is one half mass times velocity squared. All right, so let's consider the case of uh, two massive objects, M1 and M2, colliding. They have uh, M1 has an initial velocity U1, and M2 has an initial velocity U2. They collide, and so the final momentum is M1 V1 and M2 V2. <clears throat> we'll also think about how the kinetic energy is conserved, and so we'll sort of write that over here. Um, one half m one v. I'm sorry, the initial velocity u one squared plus one half m two u two squared equals one half m one v one squared plus one half m two v two squared. All right. Let's go ahead and get our m1s together on this side of the equation, our m2s together on this side of the equation. So here we'll have m1u1 minus m1v1, right? We subtract this from both sides. And then on this side of the equation, we'll have this term, m2v2, and we've subtracted this term from both sides. So we have minus m2u2. Here we could factor out m1 on the left side. So we have m1 times u1 minus v1. And here on the right side of this equation, we factor out m2 and we get m2 times v2 minus u2. That's about as far as I think we can take that one. Let's kind of do the same thing over here where we'll get our m1s together on one side and our m2s together on the other side. So we'll keep this equation uh, on the left side. We'll keep this term 1 half m1 u1 squared, and we'll subtract this term minus 1 half m1 v1 squared, right? We've subtracted this from both sides. Equals, and now I have this term already on the right side of the equation, 1 half m2 v2 squared. And here I've subtracted this from both sides, right? So I remove it from the left side, and it's negative over here on the right side of the equation, minus 1 half m2 u2 squared. Here we can factor out um, 1 half m1, and we get u1 squared minus v1 squared. And on the right side, we'll factor out 1 half m2 and get v2 squared minus u2 squared. Parentheses. Here, I think we can just uh, sort of multiply both sides of this equation by two and cancel out the one half here. And then we could um, rewrite this equation by sort of uh, expanding this, right? The difference of two squares. Uh, so I think we could write this as m1, and then this is going to be uh, u1 minus v1 times u1 plus v1, right? And if you think about distributing this u1 to both terms and distributing the negative v1 to both terms, um, the middle term there, um, u1 v1 minus u1 v1 will cancel out, and so we'll get back to this. And so we've effectively factored this to here. And likewise, on the right side, we've got our m2, and this is the difference of two squares, and so we've got a factor here of v2 minus u2 times v2 plus u2. All right, 
what we're going to do now is divide this entire equation by this equation over here. So we're dividing this, which comes from the um, conservation of kinetic energy, by this equation, which came from the conservation of momentum. So we have m1, right, u1 minus v1 equals m2, v2 minus u2. And you could probably see why we would want to do that. m1 cancels, u1 minus v1 cancels, m2 cancels, v2 minus u2 cancels, and we're left with u1 plus v1 equals v2 plus u2. If we then sort of combine our initial velocities together again and our final velocities together again, this is a mathematical way of saying that the relative speed of approach, how um, fast the two objects, one and two, see each other initially, is equal to the relative speed of separation, how fast the objects see each other sort of after the collision. And remember, the way to calculate relative speed is that if the objects are moving in the same direction, we subtract their speeds to find the relative speed. And if the objects are moving in opposite directions, then we add their speeds to find the relative speed. That's such a noteworthy statement that I would actually spell it out in my journal. I would write that out. To calculate relative speed, when objects move in the same direction, we subtract their speeds to find the relative speed. When objects move in opposite directions, we add their speeds to find the relative speed. And that idea is captured um, with this mathematical statement.